Hello guys, it's Mushiri Wamoreu. I'm your African man representing the manosphere from this side of the world. Please, if you're new here, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I am making um, as much content as I possibly can. Um, support a brother. Let's get the YouTube subscriptions numbers up, you know, because we're all trying to make it in life. I'm trying to make it all the way from all the way from Kenya, you know. So support me. I will appreciate a lot. <laughs> so today I decided to do a different video, different kind of video. And the different video is called Black Men Are Over Sexualized. Agree or disagree? This is Spectrum by Jubilee. And I thought, you know what? These, are, these guys are talking about African-American men. Does it relate to me as a Kenyan? Will it make sense? Will I, will I fit in with this African black man from the West? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how <laughs> I'm going to fail with this one. So let's do this. Black men that date white women, it, there's something different. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But you, you know what it is. Like, you, you oh, okay, child is going to be, you know, I can see that. Uh, Jordan Peele, okay, I can see that. I am expected to have a big d three. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry to, to pause this first. This guy looks like one of my friends. He's in. He's one of in, in my videos. Uh, one of the videos that I have. I'll, I'll, I'll link it up here. You go and check it. He looks like a friend uh, that I've done a video with, kind of, someone. Let me know if if you want the video. Let me know if if I'm wrong. Two, one, go. <laughs> oh wait, I, I missed that one. Sorry. Three. I am expected to have a big dick. Oh shit. Oh. Uh, am I expected to have a big dick? <laughs> oh, oh man, this is this is tough. Uh uh, I guess, yes, as a man, you're expected to have a big dick. Uh but but do I feel the pressure from this side of the world? No. I don't feel any kind of pressure to, to, to possess a big machine. I am okay with my small machine. I'm perfectly fine. And because I think, I think the ladies here already know that we don't have big dicks. I think that's a myth or it's just something made up <laughs> to just to make black men feel good about themselves for at least one thing because we are all constantly being put down by <laughs> the, the whole other... Uh, you know what? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Nobody disagrees. Nobody disagrees. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. I don't. Yo, I, don't I don't think there's yeah, any pressure like it's for a me. Stereotype, and we know that stereotypes aren't realistic. But I mean, personal encounters. I don't. I don't feel like there's leeway. I feel like, okay, that one we're keeping. Like, that's what the general notion is. <laughs> I think it gets into the issue of positive and negative stereotypes and how people need to realize that there is no such thing. I know that guy has a big dick. Come on. <laughs> he looks like, he had, nah, you don't have a big machine, dude. <laughs> the issue of positive and negative stereotypes and how people need to realize that there is no such thing. Because what you do is you put people into a box where they're expected to live up to a standard. And I feel like it's over-sexualizing black men, you know? You should want to date someone more for the pleasure physically that they can bring to you. And I know I've talked to people personally who will be like, oh, you're lucky you're black, you have a big member. And I'm like, well, I have other things to offer too. Like, I'm well-spoken, I have a good sense of humor, I'm well-traveled. Like, you go straight to like what's underneath my zipper. I wouldn't mind that, I wouldn't mind that. However, in Kenya, we are, we are majority black. We, we don't have white people here. We are like, 99%, no, 99, 98% at least black. <laughs> Maybe a few Asian people, uh, Indian, in, from people from the Indian origin, and the Chinese are also here. Um, I think Caucasians are kind of few, but not, 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 not very many. So there's no pressure, I'm telling you, there's no pressure. 
Yeah, I mean, that's been my experience a lot of times, especially, you know, meeting different people, that's the expectation. And I just tell them, <laughs> two inch Punisher, you know, don't expect too much. I'm just joking, but it's uh, a. <laughs> I think don't a lot expect of too watch much. A lot of porn Those are the too, kind of that, people. That's where it comes from. Like when you watch a lot of porn, when, you when, see. When you hear someone say, Yo, don't, don't, uh, it's, it's not that big. You know, those are the kind of people who are, who are loaded. And I'm, and I'm saying, I'm, 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 I, I know I just said I don't have a big one, but <laughs> uh, when people are humble, they're too humble, man. You know, just check out. Watch out. Watch out for those people. You know, these mandingos and, you know, 10 inch monsters and they expect that to be reality. And a lot of times it's not, but that's the expectation that they have. So, so our audience submit hot takes about this group specifically, and they are hot. So black men cheat on their significant others far more than other races. I'm just like, where is this study published? Where do I stand on this? Where do I stand? Where do I stand? I have no, I have no data. I, I, I'd probably just remain at the center. I, I don't have any data to support this one. Did someone do yeah. some research yeah, where I they calculated numbers over a given period of time. Yeah. I the reason why it was going to be neutral is because I don't know the numbers. Like, that, I don't that's know, what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, I, or not. seems like I'm not the only one who's neutral on this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I disagree. Yeah. Exactly. So I came this way because of the keyword far more. I was like, do black men cheat? In generally, like you don't, you're not apt to not cheat because of the color of your skin. To prescribe this to race feels nefarious in a way that I feel like it was coming from a place of of somebody that got cheated on by a black man. Right, right. <laughs> like, it was like, yeah, black men cheat all the time. Uh, come on, this doesn't even make sense. Black men are attracted to big butts. Is it do we? Ooh, yee. <laughs> I don't know if it's a general thing, but I love my big butts. <laughs> Agree with this, that statement, or do I personally? <laughs> I mean, th there's nothing biologically innate to like black men to you know to like ass. I think it ties into hip hop and the whole strip club scene right now. We are so far gone from like the natural aesthetics of just a natural person that right now it's all about who has the baddest ass who ass is 25 pounds with two pound legs. You know what I mean? Like that's that's hot for some reason. And I personally don't get it. I mean, it looks unnatural to me, like, you know, but I mean, a nice ass is just a nice ass though. Bru true, true, true. You know, nice is nice. Don't, don't force it. <laughs> oh, black people are funny. And if you ever try and roast one of them, they will roast your ass so hard that you'll have no roast to rebuttal. Black people are funny? Really? I don't think so. We have some really, really lame people like like me in Kenya. A country full of black people. Am I the only person who's not funny? I don't think so. So many people are not funny. In here. I mean, you guys are under so much pressure in the US. You have to be funny. You have to have a big dick. You have to love big butts. God damn, man. I don't know how to adjust that. I get what he's saying. I think black people as a collective are, fun, are funny. With you as a collective, we are funny. <laughs> Come on. Is, this, is, that even, is that even a thing, really? How can a collective people just be funny? Do we have a good sense of humor? Maybe the whole human race has a good sense of humor. Do black people specifically have a good sense of humor? Or a better one than the rest? I don't think so. You go to black Twitter, if you go to black Instagram, black Facebook, like you're going to laugh. So I think that in that aspect, that's why like that statement has so much. I mean, there are people who are going to be posting funny things on social media. The funny people are going to fun post funny things. And those are the ones they're going to see. So the guys who are not posting funny things, you're not going to see them. So I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. <laughs> it's 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 hard to express myself in English. I am a native Swahili speaker, so I, I hope you understand what I'm saying, man. Yeah. Truth in it because you just it's like so. I guess it's like the question is like black people as a whole are they funny or is like any black person gonna knock your ass off because he's super funny? Like I think that's just the difference. Yeah. Black people as a whole, like yeah, they got jokes. You know, it goes yeah. back and forth. Cool. That's why I said I was like, but collective. don't think that any black person you go to expect like a really good joke. You know. The N-word should stop being used by all races. Hmm. 
I think the N or the mean the ni the one that that either er at the end. Um, why do I start on this one? First of all, as an African guy, am I supposed to say the word? Because I do. I, I say it. Just so you know. Um, does that offend you? And also, on the back on the topic, should, should the word stop being used? I think... Mm, I think no. I, I, I don't see it as a necessity like to stop people from using a particular word. That makes sense to me. Three, two, one, go. That's hard. I just think the N-word, when you look at the root of the word, even slaves would use it to describe other black people when accepting their supposed oppression. So I just think when I think about that, I don't think you can do anything to erase the history and the blood that's been shed on that word. There are so many people who the last thing they heard was the N-word as they were being murdered. So I just, when I think about that, yes, I think the word should stop being used. Personally, me, I feel like it kind of starts with us. The fact that we make it so cool within music and within like entertainment that it lets other people feel like they have a past or that it's okay because my favorite rapper said it or mm -hmm. I heard it here or you guys say it all the time. How come I can't say it? But at the end of the day, it's black, it's black culture pain. And if anyone's going to be using it, it should only be us. And that's it. You can't really own a word. I think, you know, we can own it in the sense where it's a black cultural thing, but the idea where we kind of make it out to where we say like, oh, other people can't say it. I think that's more of like a insecurity within the black culture of not being able to hold power because historically it's like, right, historically black people didn't have as much power. So we're trying to hold on to literally a word that only has meaning because we add meaning to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, respectfully, I ain't trying to hear that, right? Like, I feel like the only reason it's police so much, and I feel like the only reason we even have like this debate or this debacle over whether we can use it or not is because we're black people. And I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those people that think everything is racist and all that, but in this specific instance, right, in many different, several instances, women in many, many instances have reclaimed the word bitch to be a term of endearment. Uh, there, there are, uh, in the 90s, there was heavier women reclaimed the word fat, uh, it, obviously respelling it and things like that. But I feel like in those instances, nobody bats an eye. Why is that understood? But with this, it's so confusing. Like, oh, I, I don't know if, if, like, you know when there are boundaries set. And that word... Yeah, that guy makes a lot of sense. I, I agree. Oh, on, on this particular topic, I, I, I don't think I should mention a lot of what I think about it because, again, it doesn't affect me so much. In Kenya, we call each other whatever, you know, even if someone calls me a nigger. In Kenya, I would be like, eh, you know, but again, <laughs> I think I would take offense if it's a white dude calling me that, but there are not so many white dudes here to call me that. So, so on this one, I kind of, people who are dealing with it, like on a daily, I think, yeah, should have a, should have a say with this one. Is one of the boundaries that I think we have respectfully and rightfully set up for ourselves. So I don't want to, I, I, I'm not trying to hear the like, if we use it, why can't it? We do that all the time with a bunch of different things. And I don't think this should be one of the areas where we're like, yeah, let everybody, say. no, I'm not. Well, I think it goes, back to, it goes back to where you're saying boundaries. Because when you break down to inner communities where, you know, blacks and Asians, blacks and whites and hip hop culture, where there's like, it's five group of friends and their, their black friends don't care. They're like, say oh, it. Like fast. that ha that happens. So that's it's fast. like, we're having this broad conversation. And, you know, I, I know all of us aren't trying to be sp the spokespeople for, for black people, right? But it's like, it's such a, it's such a convoluted, uh, I guess, topic where it's like the expectations aren't clear to people depending where you are. If, if you're on the East Coast, West Coast, like it's, it's very unclear. That, that's what I think. Um, I'm not arguing whether or not it's okay to say it or whether white people say it. I'm just saying if we don't want white people to see it, say it, I think it needs to be very clear. And I think 
even in fact in, in this new age of our culture, I think we're seeing more people saying, we don't want white people to say it. Homophobia is a big issue in the black community. Does this mean I'm a homophobic person? If no, I think, yes, it is a big issue in the black community in Kenya. If you're a homosexual person, it's, it's going to rub people off the wrong way. People are just not going to deal with you <laughs> the way they used to be if they realize that you are attracted to them and you are the same sex. They'll be like, yo, dude, mm -mm, don't call me no more. I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> That's how it is here. So personally, I don't care if somebody's homosexual or gay or whatever it is you want to be. I It wouldn't bother me one bit. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> A lot of us black men, we will rather be friends with the homie that you know, probably has a rape attached to his name than the homie that's part of the LGBTQ plus community. Oh, really? You'd rather be with someone who has forcefully been been with a woman than be with someone who is of a different or a unique sexual orientation? That kind of is messed up. How, why would you be with a criminal? Oh my goodness. And I think that that's something that, you know, we got to work on as people because my thing is, I don't understand the whole big phobia of, okay, what he decides to do in his free time or behind closed doors, why does that bother you so much? Why does that affect you? Like, why do you feel like it's such like the scum of the earth? And I also think it comes from religion because I, I don't want to get too controversial with that, but people are very religious, especially in the black community, you know, Christians. And, and, you know, when you talk about the Bible, you know, they say, you know, homosexuality is a sin. So a lot of people have that ingrained in their mind. This is absolutely not right. And for a lot of people too, they see, when they see a man, they want to see a manly man and they associate that with being straight. Heterosexual men. And, and you have to notice everybody is on the, on the agree side. So, this is, it, uh, I'd be interested to see how white dudes are going to react to this. Is it just in the African-American community that they think uh, gays are not really that much appreciated? Or is it generally around the world? Because in Kenya, I can definitely say most, 90% of Kenyans are going to be on their side have a fear that homosexual men will treat them how they treat women, if that makes sense. And so they're afraid of that treatment. And I'm on somewhat agree because I'm rather torn. I think I've lived a life where I'm around very open-minded, inclusive people. So I'm not sure how big of an issue it is in the community, but I know that in the black church sphere, homosexuality is often made out to be the worst thing that you can be. There's almost nothing worse than being gay. And I think that's also where some of the homophobia comes from. We like to ignore all the other sins, all the other things that the Bible outlines that are not, you know, holy. And then we just take homosexuality and we make it the worst. You know, granted, the Bible says it's an abomination. I get that. But the Bible says any sin will send you to hell. So, <laughs> But not all sins were people were punished by, by fire. And like, you know, the whole city was burnt because of Apparently, there were so many gays there. Um, it's kind of crazy. I am not that religious. <laughs> it is what it is, but yeah, that's what the Bible says. And most of the most of the people in the world are very religious, and they're going to they're going to take those kind of gestures on the Bible and you know literally s s use them with with people and apply whatever it is they they see the Bible advocating for in real life and uh that's kind of sad it's 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 also not only the bible i guess we're talking about the bible because it's um percent is like the major religion but islam does the same thing as well you know um and so many other religions gays are just not loved by 
<laughs> religious groups. You can't be pro-black and date a white person. Three. Oh, can't be pro-black and date a white person? First of all, I want to date a white person. Where can I get one? <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, um, but I, I don't think if you date a white person means you're not pro-black. Pro-black means you love your people, right? Can you love your people and love other people? Do you have to like love your people and just do everything with your people and leave everything everyone else in their own side? That would, that would be a messed up world. I think we should should let people who want to marry other people marry other people. Doesn't mean that you are not pro black if you actually intermarry with different races. Two, one, go. I think really the issue with this statement is for me, if you are a stand-up person and you stand up on your morals and your character, it doesn't matter who you date. And I think a, a, a lot of the issue is a lot of people get into, you know, interracial relationships or they date white people and they forget who they are. And if you are pro-black, it doesn't matter if you're dating a black person, a white person, because you can date a white woman and a, a, a black woman and still not even be for the cause. So I really think it's up to the person if they stand on their morals or not. I agree to a certain extent, but personally me, I feel like if you're pro-black, you're pro-black for everything. Like you're for the advancement of the race, you're for businesses, you're for everything black. So it's kind of hard for me to understand how someone can be pro-black and want so much for, you know, the black culture and the black race. And then they're in a relationship with someone that doesn't represent that, you know? So are you saying that being, you, if you are black and you're pro-black, you cannot act on attraction to someone from another race? Personally, I, well, I, I'm not pro-black, but in my mindset, like I'm saying if you're pro-black, you wouldn't find someone that's not black attractive to me. Mm -hmm. Not saying attractive, but you wouldn't even want to cross that line and even engage in a relationship with them. You can have like, you know, like lust, like, hey, you know, she's an attractive white woman, but ideally you want black kids, you want black family, you want your lineage to carry on. I don't know. I feel like the, the mm -hmm. question in itself kind of, like low key, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird that we we are so different in in, in and 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 similar in different in in weird ways, because in Kenya, what I can relate to with this one is tribalism. We have like we intermarriage between tribes is kind of the same thing now with the way you guys are saying pro black and and marrying another race because. Myself, I'm from a from a tribe called Kikuyu, and there there is like forty three other tribes in the country. Kikuyus kind of tend to intermarry around the Bantu communities, and there are Nilots and there are Kushites, and you know this we 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 have different kinds of subgroup or groups, main groups in, within those you know, um, <clears throat> but. It's 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 weird when you see like maybe a Kikuyu person marrying a Luo or vice versa. Because back in the day we used to have tribal clashes. We used to fight each other. You know this tribe versus this tribe, and we have conflicts. So marrying different tribes made you kind of in a weird position. You don't know what where to run when people are fighting. Because when you run to this side, people will be like, "Yo, you guy, you married this, the other the other side, and you're coming to us." We don't want you, and when you go to this other side, they say the same thing. So it's kind of it's difficult, <laughs> and I guess that would be the same thing. If I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying you guys should fight, but if that would be if that would be the case, if you guys had a conflict between your races, then if you if if you married someone of the other race, then you'd be in a in a, in a weird position, right? Am I right? <laughs> in the gates the demographics of the country. I mean, black folks make up 13% of the country, roughly, and a lot of the time we live in concentrations. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you in Iowa, it's gonna be a little tough to find you like a black woman, especially somebody that, that might identify as pro-black with you. So I think it depends on what you do, not who you decide to be with.
my, <laughs> my first thought response to that is like, what's the point of looking at people differently? It's like we, the, like we get upset that people do it to us in general, like looking at black people and judging them and stereotyping them and making assumptions about them. It's like, so on the flip side, why should we be doing that to other people regardless of who, you know, they're in a relationship depending on the color of their skin? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I do. Like I, I look at people differently based on who they who they marry. Cause dating, you know, you could be dating for fun. I feel like <laughs> I look at people different based on who they marry. Like Jordan Peele, Childish Gambino. I feel like I can look at them and be like, I'm not, I'm not looking down on them. I don't think of them negatively, mm. but I'm like, oh, I see. <laughs> and like, oh, okay, you, I see. Like, because pe like black men that date white women, it, there's something different, and there's nothing nothing wrong with that. But you you know what it is, like you you oh okay, child is getting. I don't know what it is. Please, someone explain to me. <laughs> what, what, what's the what's the hidden code language inside there? I I'm floating, I'm floating. You know, I can see that. Uh, Jordan Peele, okay, I can see that. I I can't think of another example, but you, I feel like I can tell, like okay, like that's cool. You know, I'm happy. You happy? It's no disrespect to them, but I see the difference. I prefer a light skin partner to a dark skin partner. Hmm. Hmm. First of all, where would I be placed in this? Am I light skin? Am I dark skin? In Kenya, I am kind of in the middle. I'm not light skin, I'm not dark skin. We have really, really dark people and really, really light skin, like people, almost Caucasian, like. Uh, and do I have a preference per se? No. <laughs> I don't have a preference. I am okay with dating a dark skinned person, light skinned person. Color never crosses my mind. However, I am I must say in in our country, in Kenya, we do have people who prefer light skins more than the darker skinned people. And that's that's crazy, but that's that's a fact. Three, two, one, go. I prefer a light skinned par partner to a dark skinned par partner. I don't play them colorism games over here. <laughs> All right, so the reason why I, subconsciously for me, the reason why I feel that way is, you know, growing up, I was always, uh, you know, bullied for my skin color. I always felt out of place, you know, I was always told I'm not black enough. And when you constantly hear that and you get beat <coughs> down with that and, you know, you doubt yourself. And like, like I said, you know, the crazy bit is that in Kenya, we do also have those issues. When you're younger, you get attacked. If you're too dark, people are going to make fun of you. <laughs> it's not even, it's not even, it's crazy. We're in, we're in a black community, almost hundred percent black, but we still have those colorism issues. Uh, I, I, I remember when I was in primary school, that is probably grade school in your, in your, in your situation, who knows. Um, there was a, there was like this girl, no one wanted to sit around her because they thought she was too dark and she was too ugly. So the colorism is not only in America, it's also here. I grew up in a broken home. I grew up in a foster care system. So I never, it took me a long time to figure out myself. And for a lot of times, I don't tell a lot of people this, but I used to hate the way I looked. I, I was like, I don't like being dark skinned. I want to be light. And I'm just being honest, but now I'm more comfortable with myself. I guess I have a question. Do you think it's because um, you look at a potential partner as lighter skinned so that your you know, potential children or so would be lighter skinned so they don't have to go with go through what you feel like you went through on that note there's a there's a, a, a famous uh, socialite in the country um this is a woman who you know sells her body to popular people she she was really really dark and at some point she decided to bleach her skin and now she's she's been trying to date people who are light skin I think in my theory or my hypothesis is that she is trying to make sure that her kids, even if they, they turn out dark, they won't be as dark as she is because she's trying to get the light skinned people to date. She, if, if you see her pattern, she's always been going for the light skinned people. She's a celebrity or a popular person. So <laughs> that's, that, that's my theory. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that's what she's looking for or what she's trying to, to achieve. But 
I could see that happening. Nah, you know, at the end of the day for me, I, I'll i marry whoever I, I, I see me fit. So it really doesn't, to me, matter about the skin color, but I will admit subconsciously, I do think, you know, when I see a light-skinned woman, I actually, you know, look a little longer or I might linger a little uh, longer or be a little more interested just because of, you know, that, that consciousness that I have. You know, this guy, when he comes to Kenya, he will not be considered black. People would not consider this guy black. They would, they would call him Amzungu. They would say he's a white person. I had grown up. So it's, it's not something that I say that dark-skinned women are far unsuperior or light-skinned women are more superior. It's just because of the constant beat down and the constant hatred about me being dark-skinned and the way I was treated that subconsciously I do think that way. But do you feel like you have some sort of like self-hatred because of that? Yeah, well, not anymore because it took me a long time. I mean, this started happening, you know, like I said, when I was six, when I got in foster care. So, but now I'm more comfortable with looking at myself. I'm a good looking, tall glass of chocolate milk. So okay. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Like, do you at all feel like you've become the person that bullied you by then having this preference toward lighter skinned people as opposed to someone that would look like you? I will admit, yes. I, I will admit that, and uh, you know, like I said, we, you know, we just shooting a, you know, shooting a realism. So I, I do agree with that, yeah. And I think that's why now I'm focusing on myself, and you know, being a part of this discussion is very important for me because I'm starting to, you know, realize that that prejudice needs to go. And I see this a lot uh, in, in the entertainment industry now, where you know they want a black woman, but they want the the Zendaya. your complexion. They want that light skin mm -hmm. that look like she can go in between the white family and the black family. And mm -hmm. I, I think I, I only speak openly about it because I know there's a lot of people who feel that way too, but they don't want to admit to it or they don't want to express it and you know be rejected. So um, I, I mean, you see, I, I am also aware that in Brazil, this is obviously not related to the U.S., but in Brazil, they have a lot of colorism issues. I I think Brazil has majority dark-skinned people, but when you look at their media, it does not represent that. It's mostly lighter-skinned people that are put there, um, which is I don't even see. I don't understand how that even happens. How how are you the majority and you like you're not even represented? Even in TVs, like. You don't see people, Brazil, even soap operas, they are very popular, but you don't see darker skinned people. And apparently they are the majority in that country. Even in the media too, so I think that plays a big part in that too. I currently go to therapy. Three, two, one, go. I do not go to therapy. <laughs> do I need it? Maybe. I plan to go on one soon. No, in future, maybe. Um, my therapy is my friends. Or <laughs> there's, there's one there's one friend of mine I talk to when I have issues. Then he just sits there and listens. And you know, <laughs> is that right? Is that therapy? No. Yes. Uh, who knows? Um, but maybe, maybe it's not therapy. I'm gonna call it. It's not therapy. I don't go to therapy. Me and my girlfriend's my therapist, but she don't like that. So I'm, I'm thinking about going fairly soon just to speak my mind because I feel like there's a lot of things that, you know, everything's cool up front, but everyone has like something that's just like digging at them somewhat internally that, you know, may hinder them in some sort of way, you know? And I feel like, uh, you know, if you have that type of feeling, like you should go. Hmm. Yeah, therapy can be going to the beach or like going out to eat or doing something that relaxes you. So Physical yeah. therapy. Oh. Really? Going to the beaches therapy? Am I the one who are missing this part? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, hold geez. on, hold on. <laughs> we, got, we have to be able to draw a line. I know what I'm saying. It's open to interpretation. Yeah. I'm here because well, yeah. I took it as like sitting in front of a therapist, someone licensed to do this. Do I do that? No. Do I no. find other avenues to... Then, really then you're not in therapy. Like, <laughs> if you're not doing that, you're not in therapy. Like I said, I have a friend who... I'd consider my therapist, but I know he's not a therapist and I don't go to a therapist. And maybe I still have my own issues. Leave stress or whatever, yes. 
But you can't okay. mix up self care with therapy. Okay, it's two different right. things. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. I've been in therapy for quite some time, um, personal therapy, um, just for myself, just issues that I have internally that I speak with someone with on a professional level. I recommend therapy. Therapy is literally the best thing you could possibly mm -hmm. do. Uh, for me, I find therapy in my faith, you know, and uh, I know there are a lot of people who they look at like, you know, the Christian church specifically and might not adhere to that. But I think in recent years, uh, the church has been adding more professionalism to what therapy means. Having these conversations, you know, for some reason, it makes you feel like of less of a man, because when we talk about therapy, you know, people are like, really, you going to <laughs> therapy? But when you think about it, that's why a lot of people have anger issues. That's why a lot of black men have anger issues because, you know, they grow up a certain way or they face a lot of challenges and they don't know how to express it. So the first thing they do is they take it out on you or their girlfriend or their mom and they don't have someone or an outlet to express it. So I think we need to normalize going to therapy, uh, therapy and not pushing it off as a white thing. We need it, you know. Why do you guys push these things as white you know swimming is kind of white um therapy is kind of white what is what is kind of white <laughs> man you know I, I i'd wish to understand what you guys are going through man because it's, it's 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 very different we need healing and we need somebody to talk to us i think healing trauma is going to help black people progress instead of just getting more trauma piling on top of each other. And in a lot of ways that does come into an aspect of personal responsibility because it's like my issues with my dad at a certain point has nothing to do with him anymore. At a certain point it has to do with me and how I process it. And I have to go for him, do I want to get angry every time I, I'm in the same room as him or do mm -hmm. I want to be able to walk in the same room as him and not have that reaction? And that was what I processed in my head when I was going through that therapy. My father was present in my life. <laughs> uh, this was this was easy. He's been present. He's present still. <laughs> He's actually even watching my videos. Apparently, hi dad. So uh, that's it. Three, two, one, go. Not to jump into this one, like. Oh, <laughs> to from this, uh, I, I didn't expect this because from like me watching Kevin Samuels, I'd, I'd almost think that most people are gonna disagree because he says African Americans have father daddy issues because fathers are not present. But from this poll, it seems like that's not the case. So I'm kind of kind of lost. I absolutely love my dad. I'm even getting a little emotional thinking about my dad. My dad's amazing. My dad was there for me in every way, shape, or form, every facet, every way that he could be there for me and more. He was there for me. He was there to pick me up from school. He was there at my soccer games, my track meets. He was my coach for soccer one year. My dad taught me everything that I know almost. He is who I model my personality after. He is who I aspire to be. Um, I don't think I could have had a better father. It's almost why I'm discouraged to have kids because I feel the pressure to live up to the example that he set for me. So mm -hmm. he was there, still is. I, I said someone would disagree because my, I ended up being put in foster care when I was six years old with a couple of my younger brothers. And uh, I remember, uh, I don't remember what my dad looks like, but I do remember uh, he passed away when I was around seven or eight. So uh, I can't really fault him for that, but you know, my mom, she was uh, widowed, so she lost her husband and she just, she decided to take care of us. And I don't think my life would be any different. I don't regret not having a dad, but sometimes I do want to, you know, secretly, you know, what life would have been like if I had that fatherly figure in my life. And I think that's another stereotype that, you know, black men don't have their fathers in their life. And it's good to see, yeah. you know, a lot of y'all over there. Um, for me, my dad was not as present as he could have been. He's a typical older Belizean dude. Um, their culture is just very different from American culture. Um, it's very passive aggressive. Um, I remember times being young and I would question my mom all the time, like, hey, like, you know, why is he not around? Why is he not there? And, you know, she did the best she could as a single mother. Um, now I can say my dad is very present in my life. Um, however, I feel like our relationship is very 
like financial base, if that makes sense. Hmm. Like, I feel like I don't have a real connection with my father. Like he's there for me if I need something, like if I need to, like, if I want this, if I want that, like he's always there for me, like money wise, but I feel like I'm still like desiring for that real connection. Like how you mentioned how you have that mental connection with your father. Like, I feel like I don't have that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of puts a desire into me to where I'm desperate now to be a father, not desperate, but I'm, yeah, I'm desperate to be a father that <laughs> I want to do it right and give the things and, you know, make sure that I nurture my kid more than just the money aspect of things. Like I want. Uh, and that's the thing. If if you think you're going to make a good parent, you should definitely be a parent. <laughs> Do not skip that step of being a parent. If you think you're going to make an awesome parent, because uh, we have already very very bad parents around the world, we need we need more of this guy who thinks he'll be an awesome dad. I want to be there, you know, and always possible. I kind of feel like now I kind of just sur like suppress it and try to ignore it because he's here now, which I definitely feel like I shouldn't do. I think that it's never too late to mend a relationship. It's never too late to rewrite the story. I mean, you can't go back in time and change anything, but you can definitely mend the relationship. Because although I have a good relationship with my father, relationships are constant maintenance and their work. And I know that parents can be toxic too. They can break your heart more than anyone else can. I'm not saying that your dad did, um, but maybe you should start today. Give him a call, invite him out for a coffee. Mm. You know, start somewhere. Father's Day coming up, dog. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you should, you should, if you have issues with your family members, try and mend them. I mean, they're your family. You will never have another family. Fix those issues. Um, stop the grudge. You know? <laughs> well, let me know how you thought about this video. Um, it's, uh, it's been fun for me. But I'm going to stop it at that point. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. I'm a new... YouTuber trying to make it on the YouTube world, I would greatly appreciate this any kind of support that you can give me by subscription for the most part because you know we are about that money. <laughs> but hopefully I'm also educating you and giving you a cool or different perspective than you are used to. And that's what my aim is from for this channel, you know. If you like the video hit the like, subscribe button and the likes up the thumbs up you know so see you next time